It is time to talk some Calgary Flames hockey. Flames Unfiltered. I am Brad Root, joined alongside Kyle Lewis. We do it every week. We talk Flames. Positive, negative, whatever we're talking. It's a liner. It's, it's like Christmas here. It's like Christmas Eve tonight. We get going tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> I think I'm like, you know, the whole positive negative thing. I'm like, man, is your Christmas Eve that rough? Like, I know it's awkward with family sometimes, but damn. Damn. No, Christmas yeah. is really good. You know, this is this is the eve of the start of the season. And expect well, it is the start. It's well, yeah, the well, flame season. Because yeah, yeah it started. Yeah, NHL season started in Europe. Um and then the and started games. with a wonderful Tuesday afternoon game in Seattle. Is that yeah, because after, after where you are, at dinner time for me? What is, what is going on? Like, what are we doing having a Tuesday afternoon game? Uh, I don't know. I couldn't look at my hack show. I was going to ask you. I'm like, is there some holiday in the States that I'm not aware of? Because no, I think I'm aware of most of no those. holiday. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't. I don't know. I don't understand. A moi non plus, the French would say. Me it's going to be a good episode. We got a lot to talk about. We do. What do Loads. you think of? What do you think of there's a game tonight in Utah? Seems weird. Do Mormons watch it's, hockey? I don't think they do, eh? I I, I hope they do because they're going to build a new arena that holds 17,000. Right now they got one that holds 13, but 4,000 people can't see. Is that all that build, that building holds, really? I think it's I think it's actually like 11 something. And there's a ton of obstructed views from what I've been told. Wow. Um, Did you see yeah, concession places, though? Yeah, oh, I heard about that this morning at Sportsnet. Yeah, they're actually reasonable. Popcorn, $3, nachos, $3, hot dogs, $3, ice cream, $3, and water, $3, $2. Right. So at a yeah, junior correct. hockey game here on Sunday, I took my brother and my niece. It was her first hockey game. Um, a bag of popcorn, this is Canadian dollars, was $9. No way. It, $9. It, it, it costs nothing to make popcorn. I will yeah, say we, this. We give it away the, where I work on, on the weekends when they're open. It's crazy. At my junior rink here, it's two bucks for a box of popcorn. They're great prices. Unbelievable. It wasn't even that good. No. That's, <sighs> movie, theater. That's movie theater dollars. Yeah, somebody's told me the other day about like, the profit margins for concessions at movie theater, and it's somehow more astronomical than you would expect. It's insane. Insane. It's ridiculous. Um, so where, where do we begin? What do you want to start with? I don't know. Let's start where we started last week. Like, did you see episode two of the chase? Yes, I did. I did. What, what, what is your take on it? Was it good? Did you like it? <laughs> the first one must've been better because I barely remember the second one. I um, know. That's how I felt too. After I watched it. Cause then I wrote the note to ask you about it. I I, well, I get, I guess watch them cut players uh, now granted players that everybody, including the players themselves expected to be cut was, was interesting. Um, but, uh, I, I don't know. When's the third one out it's tomorrow. I don't know. I don't even know if there's a rhyme or reason to when they come out. I, I kind of like I it. Know. I mean, don't get me wrong. Oh, it's super out. cool. It's super cool. It's just like, I don't know. The first one was really cool, and the second one was just, meh, you know, whatever. I know. Pedestrian, I'll we call need, it. We need drama. We need, well, <laughs> oh, God. Number really three on. could be a lot better if they didn't censor it, but you know they're not. Then you know what's going to be like. They're not going to talk about their decision on waivers and stuff like that. They can make it all dramatic, like, you know, like with music and camera cuts and stuff like Love is Blind or something. That'd be kind of fun. Love is blind. De yeah, de Why do we even go back to that? So I have repressed memories of watching that show, but uh, Netflix is bugging the shit out of me because I guess the newest season's on there. So maybe I'll get drunk some night and watch it. Now they have, now they have Love is Blind like Australia, and they have like all these other. It's crazy. Ah, it's crazy. It's become a worldwide phenomenon. People parodying relationships, although some of them apparently are still together and lived happily ever after. But I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I don't. I don't, I don't think people listen to us talk about Love Is Blind, but if that's what they want, you know, tweet us and we'll talk more about it on the next show. I don't think so. I'll watch it just for the just for the sake of our listeners. I'll I'll consume more we're, of that crap. We'll probably get people to tweet us to, to tell us not to talk about the flames. 
You know, actually, I got to say, I was disappointed. So um, <laughs> yesterday, yeah, it was yesterday when Sam Honzik uh, had made the team and uh, switched number 29, I posted a picture of Mike Vernon wearing 29. It was like the last great player, last great flame to wear 29. Not a single like, not a single retweet. <laughs> I was a nostalgic loser there like me would be all over that, but nobody cared. It was my least nobody cared for tweet ever. Nobody gave a shit. You know, honestly, when he changed to 29, you know, I thought, who was the last one that I remember wearing 29? Are you serious? I did. Good for you. Good for you. I'm proud of you. Who was it before that? Right before now, right? Vernon. I kind of. I, I know I'm not. I'm drawing oh, away with wait, wait, hey, hey, hey. Oh, no, before Joe Vernon. Wallace. I thought you meant since. Before, no, before Vernon. Wade Belak. Oh, jeez. Okay. R.I.P. Yeah. I thought Any you meant the one? last guy to wear 29. No. We're not going to talk about him because he's not worth talking about. But anyway, um, granted, he wasn't really worth talking about when he was on the team either. But <laughs> um, you want to know something? Yeah. I got a theory. I got a theory, and I've been meaning to tweet this and, on, and or bring this up on the show. And quite honestly, there probably isn't a better show to talk about this on than I'm really we- scared. This is like a super segue into the next part. But did you notice? Okay, Pelche was 49 forever, right? A while, yep. And then he changed to what? Was it what did he change to? Are you serious? It's hanging all over my basement. <laughs> you asshole. 22. <laughs> God, you're a dick. Go on. <laughs> so the day he changed. He almost turned into a bad hockey player. <laughs> Do you remember Pavel Bure switching from 96 yeah. to 10 in Vancouver? No, from 10 to 96. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure when he broke into the league, when they were in the cup finals against the New York Rangers, he was number 10. He went to 96 late in his career. And then he switched back because he had a horrible year by 96. I thought it was the other way around, but what the hell do mm-hmm. I know? He was 10 in Florida. He was 10 when he first came to Vancouver. I knew he was 10 in Florida, and he was 10 in New York. The only reason I know this is because I've had a problem with him my entire life. He was like my favorite, one of my favorite players, and he was on a rival. That's that's a dumb, dumb situation to be in, but I love the way he played, right? Oh, man. He was so fast. Quite honestly, you know what, Kyle? If you asked me, Who's the most exciting player you've ever watched? I think it would hit. I think I think I would say Pavel Bure. I do. Yep. You'd definitely be up there for sure. Um, you know, do, right. Is there anything to this jersey thing that I that I just brought up? No, I don't. I'm, 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 no, no, I don't think so. When he wore forty nine, he was doing good things in Calgary. Comes back, makes a team, puts twenty two on, gets injured right away, comes back, struggles. Hasn't been anything since. That's superstitious. I mean, I'll tell you from my experience, I wore 14, I switched to 74, and I still sucked. So, 74? How the hell did you come up with that number? Flurry's Olympic number. Because oh. Brandon Shanahan always wore 14. You know what? I will give you major props on that because nice. I, you know, I, I never wore 14, but I was, yep. well, I mean, Theo Flurry was my favorite player growing up. Yep. Uh, I wore number five, and then. Oh, when I, I when I played senior when I played senior men's, I wore fifty five, and I don't know why. Don't ask me why. I don't know why. Shane O'Brien, forever a flame. Um, what? Okay, you just made me think of this. I was going to rant about this the other day, and I'm sure I get ranting about something else. Rudger McGordy in Pittsburgh wearing number two as a forward. It's weird. Don't like it. Well, here's the thing. But do you watch uh, football at all? Like, yeah. Okay, I, I'm not. A, I'm, I watch a lot of football, but I'm not like a huge players guy. Like, I don't know the players like I should probably, but to be a fan. But it's weird to me. Like I was watching the Giants the other day highlights, and I don't know what his name is. He's good, but he's a def- like he's like a a safe, not a safety, but like a linebacker, and he was number zero. I didn't know they could wear that. That's weird. Yeah, they they can. You can wear anything anywhere now. Like zero was a fucking kicker's number. I mean, I. I I don't know. Yes, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know. Well, I, I and I feel like I have no right to be upset by these things because, like, I was like, I thought it was so stupid when Brian Burke didn't want players wearing like high numbers. 
and now you can afford wearing a super low number. I'm like, ah, I don't like that. It's stupid. So, so do you like now? Like, if you're Sam Hondick, like I don't know. I a part of me would have almost wanted to keep 42. I guess he didn't, but like I hope Connor Zary doesn't change. He's 47. Oh, he's staying 47. I got the T-shirt, so he's got to keep it. Um, <laughs> who's the last flame you remember wearing number 42? Not a clue. But for me, it's Mickey Dupont. How do you even come up with this shit? He played for the St. John Flames, and so I, I'm was, great with numbers and names. Who was the last person to wear 43? Because if I'm Klapka, I'm changing from 43. I don't the know last, why. Oof. Who's the last flame to wear 43? Come on. I have no idea. Let me look at my I half expected Nazem Godry to wear it when he came to Calgary. Oh, are you looking are you looking this up? I'm trying. Not, I'm not real fast at anything today. I, I, you know what? Another problem I have, I have today, and I, I can't believe I'm even going to talk about this on the show. Uh, I had a sandwich today at a deli, <laughs> oh my God. Okay. and prior to my first bite, I noticed an excessive amount of onions on it. <laughs> I'm not a big onions fan, and so I push the onions off with my my fingers and all I can smell now and honestly taste. And I didn't even eat one is freaking onions. Yeah. I've washed my hands 10 times. I put hand sanitizer on. I've done everything short of the suggestion of the guy at work to spray degreaser on my hands. I did not go that far, which you at know, this you, point you, now I should have, because I'm going to solve all your problems right now. <laughs> Stain, stainless steel. Stainless steel. Get, take your kitchen sink if it's stainless, rub your fingers on it. Really? I'm serious. Yeah. They make, uh, I never knew this until I was given one. I didn't know why, but they make stainless steel soap bars for exactly that purpose. Really? Yep. 100%. Give it a whirl. Let me know. Also, this, I, I know we pride ourselves in not rehearsing these shows, but this this might be the worst one we've ever done so far. <laughs> You're all over the place. Worst show we've ever done or... The worst format or lack thereof? I don't know. Anyway. Oh, I found it. Roster, jersey, numbers. I had to like kill time while I did that. Uh, 43. There's actually been six flames that have wore 43. <laughs> and if you Giver. could name one of them, I would give you a lot of money. Travis Brigley. Oh, he was playing for the know that. No, but I, he, of, I, I, I never would have thought it, but I do remember that now. A lot of Slav Cohen. <laughs> That's cute. Brennan Evans. Ah, oh, 2004 playoff legend. Yeah. Joel Piscula. Christopher. I actually Breen. remember that. Oh, Chris Breen wore it too. He was a big dude. He was a real big dude. Can you name the last person to wear 42 before Sam Hansing? 21 22. 21 22. Uh, wow. No, I can't do it. Glenn Godden. Ah! I, I'm disappointed. I thought you'd get that one for sure. I think I still follow him on Instagram. Are we ready to talk about relevant stuff now? We're 14 minutes in. <laughs> we probably should. Maybe we owe it to our listeners and to ourselves, quite frankly. It's so relevant stuff. Let's start with, uh, and I was a contributor to this, as I often am, when there's flames outrage in Twitter land. X, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um... The Pelche waving. Waivers were put uh, on Devin Cooley, Jacob Pelche, Coach Schwint on Sunday. No, Saturday. No, Sunday. It was Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. Jeez. I'm, so, I'm on the money today. Right. And uh, Jacob Pelche clears. Devin Cooley clears. Coach Schwint doesn't. I have opinions and thoughts on all. Uh, share them, and I will... Which one, do you want, which one do you want to talk about first? Start with Cole Schwinn. Okay, Cole Schwinn. Um, I was really disappointed. Honestly, you're gonna you're gonna want to punch me through the screen. Probably. What? Well, no, I shouldn't. I can't say that. That would not be a truthful statement. I was gonna say probably more disappointed that I would have been if LJ would have been claimed. Oof. Here's here's my thought on Cole Schwinn. Do I think he would have blossomed into a Every day, top 
two center? No. Could he have been a three or four? Maybe. Needed some improvement. But what I liked about him is that for an organization that was so, so we lack center depth, so bad. I just yeah. hated to lose a young right-handed center, right? I, I, I don't know. I wasn't ready to quite to give up on him, although kind of was given a chance this year to be the fourth line center and didn't earn it. So I understand the system. You got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah, he kind of, Kevin Rooney was slotted into that spot and then... You know, Ponzik making the team. I don't think anybody saw that coming. I, I dare anybody to tell me they did, actually. Oh, no. um, but Sam Morton was a, had a really good camp. You know, and he probably opened this up to happen more, Sam Morton did, because yeah, yeah. he's probably the first line call, first call up for the fourth line center if need be. Yeah, you, I think so. Agree? Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think Cole Schwint is always going to be a very useful player in professional hockey, but I don't think he's going to necessarily get a foothold anywhere as an everyday NHL or anyway, but um, the, the second guy, because this is an easy one, I guess, in a sense, Devin Cooley. Um, mm-hmm. I thought he had a really good camp. I, was, I mean, I, I expected them, I think, as you did too, to start with three goalies. Um, I wasn't really concerned necessarily he'd be claimed. I expect we're going to see him sooner than later. We don't even know who's starting the first game with the Flames. Um but uh, not an earth shattering move by any stretch. I didn't, you know what I think, I think was a clincher on that. And it was, there's been a lot of talk on, on flames radio about this. And then that was the fact that uh, having that second year, a one way deal scared some people off, scared anybody I think off that was willing to uh, take a flyer there. You know, do is Devin Cooley the answer? I, I don't know. The, the flames coaching staff has nothing but good things to say about him. I, I, you guys, he's played 12 NHL games and what, like six periods of preseason hockey that I watched. Then I'm one of them was three periods. He played in Edmonton. that I couldn't watch. Mm-hmm. So I have no idea to form an opinion there. No, it's going to depend on the other two guys to just see how quickly we see him, but we're going to see him this year. There's absolutely no question about that. Whether it's an injury or somebody playing poorly, he'll, he'll be back. Um, Pelche. So I'll I'll be brief on this for my part because the only he didn't have a good camp at all. Um and the only thing I didn't like was the team's deference to keep somebody like Joel Hanley and wave Jacob Pelche. I really that just to me made it, the, the only thing I can figure is Conroy talked to some teams maybe about not claiming him, but I thought that was just a stupid, stupid move. Okay. I'm I have to push back a little bit, Kyle, on this one with you. And here's why. They're not fighting for a position. He's a defenseman. And now I don't really, you know, honestly, I don't really know if I want Joe Hanley on the team, period. Right. I kind of wish we'd have put on waivers and I kind of would have probably slipped a 50 to some team to take him because we have too many defensemen. Right. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is he didn't take a spot from Pelch. Oh, no, no. Zick did. Klapka did. Those guys did. Yep. You know, I mean, keeping Pelche and Coronado on the everyday roster does not help Pel- Pelche at all because he's not making the lineup. No, I agree. I agree. I just well, think the risk of losing him was, was the only issue I had because I do think he's he could still be a very useful piece, but he's going to have to go to the Wranglers and, and tear it up, quite frankly. That and he should have all the motivation in the world to do what he claimed he wanted to be part of this organization. So that throws us into the X factor. It's YYC Flames says, I've never seen so I've never had this much confidence in the Flames management team. Watching the preseason and Conroy and Huska sticking to their word means young guys will fight for their spot and will fight to stay in the NHL. Rooney is a center, Pelts is a winger. And and I and I know what he's referencing here, and it was. Yeah. You're right. Um and, and, and maybe for good reason, Twitter world for the Flames was a buzz on, on Sunday. And, and a lot of it was making comments like you just said for Hanley. And, and, and I agree because I really don't know if I want Hanley on the roster either. But he hasn't proven it to me yet. He may. But well, he's, he's always going to be a 7 or 8, I think. But the problem, the problem there is that if you lose Joel Hanley, it's like, okay. So then you get Solovyov, you know, or you've got... Totally. Uh, 
Grishnikov, like so many options, right? And and that and that's that that's where that pushback comes from. And I understand the positional argument because yeah, that's also valid. But um, anyway, it, it all worked out in the end because Pelcia wasn't good enough to be on the team, so he'll get his reps in the American League, and we'll go from there. The positional thing, you know, it, it even like the Rooney even makes more sense. But Pelche wasn't fighting for Rooney either. He's a winger. Yep. And so it is an interesting dynamic. But you know what? When this is all said and done, did we not get the ultimate win in this? Because what we did is, as ballsy as it was, we risked a guy that hasn't really shown us anything, but is a number one pick, so you hate to just lose an asset for nothing. I, I'm all... I, 23, yep. Yeah, I, I agree at 23. Now, if he... It, a year from now, I don't oh, care. The cup bait, yep. I don't I care. That's fair. But what, what this does now, though, is because of his injuries, I'm giving him a free pass, and he, he probably deserves it because he has been injured a lot. Yeah, but what this does true. is it sends him down to the minors, and is going to let him develop correctly. Yeah, having him on our opening day roster and not risking the the waiver thing was a safe move. But then he doesn't even crack our lineup without another without another maybe two injuries. And the time just him sitting there is surely not going to do him any good. I I don't think. No, 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 definitely not, definitely not. So I guess that that's a. And you know that that and that's a good, good X factor because uh, it was so much conjecture around all of this. But that is a good segue as well in terms of the injury that the Flames are dealing with, which is to their leading goal scorer from last year, Yegor Sharangovic. So week to week, uh, lower body, um, kind of creates some interesting movement in the lineup. So Hanzik, you know, getting reps with Kadri and Kuzmenko. Um, I. I'm really excited to see how that pans out. I'm really, really curious to see how this guy handles everyday NHL duty. A couple of things that I'm really interested. I'm well, Sam, let's, uh, let's talk about Sam. Well, yeah, let's talk about Sam. It, not that I, I surely don't want Sharon Govich to go down. And quite honestly, when I saw that injury, were you not more worried than what we're being told so far? Uh, I wasn't, I didn't see it for the first couple of days after it happened. And then I finally did. And I was like, mm. I was worried more of a surgery type situation, which there's Conrad. It had a bit of a little bit of a, a, a line aid light look to it, like a little bit gruesome looking. Um, yeah. And I mean, despite all the naysayers, and they have plenty of reason to feel this way, I felt like the Flames icing a healthy lineup to start the season. Like, I really do think they're capable of surprising a lot of people if the goaltending holds up. I agree. Um, but losing Sharon Govich in that unbelievably, like, probably top 10 lethal NHL shots. And what he does um, for the power play. Oof. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, week to week is always a week to week is very ambiguous. I find as an injury description, um, it, just based on the nature of, of, you know, how it's worded. So I don't know. I expect we'll see him by the first week of November, hopefully at the latest. I would hope so. Yeah. Would but, hope so. uh, yeah, it, it kind of throws a bit of a monkey wrench, but it also creates some obviously opportunity for Hanzik, uh, Coronado. I'll tell you what, what I think is going to happen here is I think, I think we may see a, a, I don't know if we'll see a full tandem here, but I think, I think we're going to probably see like a couple of games with Hanzik. And I don't doubt that we don't see Coronado in that position too in the, in the near future. No, what, that does, what that does for them is it really creates a, a really good opportunity for Sam Hanzik to, uh, to step into the NHL and, and gain some confidence playing with some guys that, that quite honestly are, our biggest offensive creators, right? Yeah, most certainly. And, and the thing too, like, and the Peltier thing, I'll just, you know, to harken back to that for a second, we have an embarrassment of riches in terms of prospects right now. I've never said that in reference to the Calgary Flames in my life. Let's just hope they're hot top end prospects though. Because I, I agree with you. I agree. But I, I think we have a misconception that we think all of them are going to pan out, and I and I, I don't see that. No, but I mean, look at it this way. I guess when when's the last time you were legitimately excited about more than one, maybe two Flames prospects at a given time? Like when Sam, who was who was drafted the same year as Sam Bennett? I don't remember. I don't either. But no, I I agree with you totally, Kyle. Because you know what? Twelve months ago, Zari and Possible stepped in and rocked our world, and they're still on the roster now. So if we can get Hanzek and Coronado to be everydayers what does that do to our lineup for the future right 
Exactly. Yeah, and and the the potential of having some of these guys pan out is greater than it's ever been because you're getting properly developed. I think the team's doing right by these kids, and that includes demoting Peltier. Now, I agree. That doesn't that set a tone though. Like, and I and I'm not trying to talk bad about Peltier. I, I just I really no. don't. I really do hope he pans out. Yeah, but he's got to find his game. But you can't put him in a position he didn't earn just because he's a number one draft pick. And no, and you can't sit him in the press box for that time either because he's not going to improve. He's not going to get his confidence back, right? Exactly. Um, so this is interesting, and I don't know if you saw this. I only saw it earlier today, but you mentioned a year ago. Had you heard Zadorov's recent comments? No. What did he say now? Well, it's it's interesting, and, and I don't disagree with him. So Zadorov on a recent podcast uh, was talking about Calgary and First of all, he said the best two years of his life, hockey-wise, were playing for Daryl Sutter, and that's not surprising, you know, given Zadorov's mm-hmm. style of play and how well he did play for the Flames. But he said that after Tree Living and Sutter were gone, he was willing to stay with the Flames, but apparently the team engaged in extension talks with Tanev, Hannafin, and Lindholm, but not with Zadorov, and he felt yeah. kind of butthurt by that. Okay, you want to know why that happened? I believe, I, and I'm not, obviously I'm not in the room. I have no idea. I don't know what my theory is. Freaking Zadorov spouted off these giant numbers out of the gate. Like he always does. And I think Flames management said, piss on it. I'm not playing Zadorov's little money game. Let's go talk to these other guys. Yeah. You know, it's funny though. And and this is, you can say this about, um, I've said before, Johnny Gaudreau, like he, he had so much success under Joel Sutter, like, and all, and a lot of guys did, right. Um, (laughs) During that 21, 22 season and how much fun that was. But, it's really interesting to me, the players that doesn't matter where they play or who they play for, they're successful and how many of them are product of their environment. Like Eric Goodbranson getting paid oh, in Columbus. I still laugh at that. Yeah, and good for him, but he parlayed the perfect coach and system for him into a big contract elsewhere. And we've seen how that panned out, right? Not to say Goodbranson's not a decent defenseman and all that, but it's just like there's not many guys in this league that can go play anywhere for anyone and have success. Yeah, you know, you're right. So, and Zadorov, I mean, I think he'll do well in Boston, um, and I, I hope Lindholm does as well. But yeah, but but it's just interesting to me, right? And you're right. I do remember him throwing around some or his camp throwing out some big numbers back then. And I then just, within a few months, he was gone. I just think the Flames were like, God, we got four guys that we could do this with, right? Yeah. Like, why are we going to fight the the uphill battle with Zadorov when he's kind of a roller coaster, anyways? Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, by that point, it was coming clear and clear the team had to go in a different direction. Like, and that's what we've done, and now we're here. So, Tyson Berry signs a one-year one point two five coming out of his PTO, no trade protection or anything like that. Uh, your thoughts? <laughs> I laughed my ass off when he was first interviewed about it. When like his phone was ringing, he's like, "I'm trying to get a signal. <laughs> Hold this phone up." <laughs> um. <laughs> And he was really candid and humble, you know, saying, you know, he's had a lot of success in the NHL, had some really good contracts. Um, the way he circled back to the Flames. Now, obviously, he's going to be a contributor on the power play. Um, I, I don't I don't want to see him in the lineup every night necessarily myself because I do believe we have better options defensively and guys who need to get some playing time in. But I do think we're going to see him more often than not because obviously, you know, he has a skill set that they put a lot of value on. And understandably so, I mean... Um, we Uyghur's production last year was almost entirely even strength, right? Not to say it wouldn't be good on the power play, but they kind of needed a power play quarterback of sorts. We, and we need a it. bridge. We need a bridge guy until we can get um, or, 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 yeah. we need it. We need a bridge guy, and I think he fits that mold really, really good. Yeah. And you know what's what's funny about our defense? You know, like I, I, obviously we know what we got with with Uyghur and Anderson. Um, I made my comments about Hanley. I, I hope he proves me wrong. Um, Pahal's really, really impressed me since we we picked him up off of waivers. Yep. Very Mira physical. Ma- Mira Manoff, I'm the jury for me is still out on him. I really don't know what I feel. I think everybody signed. feels that way about him. Why is that? Why do we feel that way? Like, uh, he had some for? Like, are we waiting well, for him to not do well, or I? I well, I think there's a few things. So he he converted to defense very late in his career. Um, and he had a lot of injury problems, mm-hmm. which really limited his effectiveness and just ability to play. Um, so we've never really had a sustained look at him as an NHL 
everyday defenseman. Now he had a lot of success with Weger, but I mean, I think you or I could have success with Weger too, right? Yeah. So a full season of him. Let's see. We, that's all we can do, right? But you know, the team was high on him. Obviously, I mean, he was looked at by many as a throw-in in the Hannafin trade. But they saw something in him. I saw something in when he when he played here, right? Mm-hmm. So and you've always been really high on him, and and I'm not yeah. against him. I'm just I'm just like I don't know. I'm just like I I still feel like the jury's still out, and I I think I'm probably not alone in that. Yeah, ex- and exactly. And and another guy who the jury's still out on, and I'm gonna you know plead my ignorance here because I just found this out yesterday. But Kevin Ball. Mm-hmm. I did not know he was Swedish. I didn't either. I had no idea. I had no idea. I knew he was yeah. six foot six, and I knew he there was a lot. You know, he was the kind of defenseman they were looking. Well, again, similar to. Well, I was going to say similar to Zadorov, but really, he's nowhere near that physical. But um, can I ask you a question? Box, you know, I had a question. Yeah. Ball, yeah. And, ball and bean, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that just sounds weird. Why? Why does it? We don't, none of us even know anything about them. Other than well, we play, but we've penciled them in, and no one's getting their spot. You notice that though? Well, I've been high on Bean for a while. I wanted him to sign in Calgary a year ago. I was really okay. hopeful that he would because of his success there. He's from there. Like, I I just always liked his game, and I just defensemen, as we've you know everybody knows, often take quite a while to develop. Um, I. <laughs> Ball, I can't say as much. I mean, I think he's being treated as kind of a, a given because he was acquired as a, a big piece in that Markstrom trade. Um, but neither one has proven anything to any great extent. But they both come with a you know a decent draft pedigree and and potential, right? So, and I mean, also our defense is thin enough that we expect guys with at least some NHL experience to make the most of these opportunities, right? Yeah. I hope they work out. Like I'm excited to watch them because we really don't know. Is they're kind of like, like our defense with Ball, Bean, Mermanov. I really want to see. I, I got a lot to learn on those three guys. A lot. Rasmus Anderson's got to feel like Will Smith in the last episode of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. What? Like standing in the empty house, just looking around. Everybody's gone, right? Like <laughs> it's Steve so weird. Anderson, Backlund, of course, is captains. Alternates yeah. this year are Uyghur, Coleman, Anderson, Kadri, and Huberdo. Why in hockey do we have to have so many damn assistant captains now? Well, first of yeah, okay. So you said two different things there, which is it was actually my point I was about to make. People say alternates, but if my understanding is correctly, it is assistant captain. Yes, it is assistant. Why did I say alternate? What because it everybody else mean? everybody else is saying alternate. You look at the notes here. Yeah, the 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 tweet from the flames says alternates. Yeah, I don't like they're assistant captains. Yeah, I, I, I wore I wore an A in a lot of the years that I played, and it certainly wasn't because of my skills, because I was you know relatively vocal and those types of things. But I took a lot of pride in that as being recognized and as, as an assistant captain or assistant to the captain. If you're an office fan, um, <laughs> two weeks in a row. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep it going. Um, so I I don't I don't know um, why there's so many, but the home and away thing. Like somewhere a letter home, somewhere a letter on the road. I don't really get that. I don't understand it. Why do it, is this just a sign of the times? You know how like have you ever seen it like a bank? Like, do you do you ever do you have any friends that work in the banking industry? I spent a lot of time in banks recently. Okay. There's a shitload <laughs> yes, of, I do. There's a shitload of vice presidents. Yeah. Everybody's a vice president. Oh, the financial industry is just rot with that kind of stuff. You know, I just think it's like a oh hey, we love you. We don't want to pay you more, but we're going to make you feel really good on this Friday afternoon. You're a freaking vice president. And I feel like that's what we do with these captains is like, we don't want to upset anybody. So we better pick like four or five assistants. So then we'll flip flop them on the road. And I just, I don't know. Is that what we're doing nowadays? I, I don't know. <sighs> I, you know, it all, it's a little, like, and we're not in that room. Obviously it's a little contrived to me to give letters to all the veterans Mm -hmm. because to me, I want to see one of those young guys step up enough for somebody to say, I don't know who would be in this case necessarily, but it's like, you know, this guy's getting the letter because he's, he's part of the leadership group going forward and he meshes well with the leadership group we have now. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting because like, it's it's hard for us to say who I would pick as my like. I think teams should have a captain and an assistant. I like the two. I like two assistants. You do, huh? 
Yeah. We also have now we should say we have the nicest A in the league. What do you and mean it, by that? Because they, they don't they're, they're not using the old Atlanta one. They're using on Blasty. You're right, they do. It's the nicest one in the league and it's and nobody can touch it. And it's a great throwback, you know, to the team system. Yeah. Exactly. Although it would look like shit on the on the vintage jerseys, I agree. So I, I like having traditional A on the white and the red, but the black, the the Atlanta Flames logo looks cool. But anyway, it's way too many. I get what they're doing. I don't disagree with the logic. I just it's it's a lot of letters to pass around. I agree. You want to talk predictions and projections real quick? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Let me start with this because I got all fired up with this yesterday or today. I think it was. Ooh. So, Sportsnet, CBC, whatever the hell. So, Elliot Friedman and uh, David Amber and Ron McLean, all these people who do Hockey Night in Canada, listed their cup winning. Everybody at Edmonton. Edmonton, Florida. I think one guy had Jersey, which is a pick I actually really like. There was a Dallas one, one of them. There was a Dallas one. I don't mind that one either. Jake Ottinger could take a team all the way. But I tweeted about this. I said, this is the laziest like projections <laughs> I've ever seen. Because the, like, the Oilers lost Broberg and Holloway, which are not you know insurmountable losses, but big losses nonetheless. You know They played a super long season. And I realized McDavid, and to a lesser extent in my mind, Drysaddle can take it any team all the way. But like the odds of them repeating as other teams have improved, like I don't see it. I don't even... In- I just, I don't, and maybe they lose in the West final. I'm not saying it because I'm a Flames fan. I'm just saying, like, I don't, I don't understand. I still don't really think the goaltending to do it. Yeah. And I, I just, I just don't see that happening. And maybe I'll be eating my words. Um, Me too. Maybe we'll and, same, and even with the Panthers, the Panthers are a crazy deep team, but I don't see them getting back there. Bobrovsky's not going to play that well again. I don't think. I, I don't either. Stanley Cup hangover is a real thing. It's too hard. Yeah. You're goddamn right. It's hard. Anyway, projections. Let's go. Projections. I'm going to name off a player. I'll tell you a predicted. The hockey news predicts their points, and I want you to tell me if they're going to get more or less. Oh fuck you! <laughs> Pardon my French. Yeah, I saw that. I was reading the, uh, the hockey news. Right. Well, the I'm not. I'm not doing the. I'm only doing the the realistic guys here. Like Pospisil, 33 points. 42. Coronado, 34. Mm, less. He'll be around he'll be closer to 30. Mantha, 35. That's for... Wow, that would be a flop. 55. Yes, I agree that it's a flop. Yeah, he's going to have every Back- opportunity in the world. Go on. Backlund, 38. That's pretty well accurate. Anderson, 40. Uyghur, 40. Anderson, oh, a- Anderson, 40. Uyghur's 50. Okay, how about Coleman? I thought he's 40 is right on the money. I'd give him 45 because of opportunity, but he's, he's not going to score 30 goals again. Connor Zary, 45. I love that. I could see it. I'd love to see did him you, break 50. Did you hear today what Cerevelli said on Fan 960? After what Cerevelli said yesterday, I've listened to as little of him as possible. <laughs> he, he said that he would not be surprised if Connor Zary had 70 points and was calgary's next star player how cool would that be it'd be great now there's a reason when i was in calgary in march i bought a connor zary t-shirt because i'm really high on this kid and his injury last year precluded him from an even better season but because i yeah. think what do you have 14 goals and 20 assists or something like that something like that yeah yeah he was, it was a really good year i'd love to see it i really would he's gonna be an interesting one yeah. um let's take a look here sharon Govich, 55 Probably accurate given he's going to miss, you know, five games plus. Yep. yep. Huberdo is 57. Oh, man. I should have poured a drink for this one. I think, I guess I'm more so, I hope this is the year he finally puts it back together. I got him pegged for like 70. Yeah. I'm thinking he's going to have a good year. Yeah. He changed Nobody his expects. training. Nobody expects. Yeah. 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 He's going to have a little bit more help. Two more to go. Who's Manko 58? Oh, at least, yeah. I love that guy. God damn, I love that guy. Caudry 66. That's about right. He's going to come back down to earth a little bit. I think he is going to come back down to earth. I, yeah. It's hard to replicate that, right? I have one goaltending question. Mm-hmm. 
Is Dustin Wolf a Calder Trophy candidate? Yes. Okay. Uh, I hope, yeah, well, I mean, he's getting some help celebrating his shirt <laughs> right now. That'd be a dream come true, though, wouldn't it? It would. Uh, no, that'd be a dream come true. And it's so weird, but like, let's let's think about, let's talk about even some. Let me name you two names that have won the Calder Trophy for goaltenders: Andrew Raycroft. Yeah. Oh, Jim Carrey. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, three. Jim Carrey is a good one too. <laughs> out of nowhere, I come out. Yeah. With Jim that was like an RKO. Awesome. And then uh, Steve Mason in Columbus. Oh yeah. They have a sparkling season. So you know, what would you rather have? Would you rather have Wolf? Be a Calder candidate or Zari put up 70 points. What's better for our franchise future? Wolf. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. Zari, Zari, there's a lot of guys that will probably eventually have a 70 point season in this organization. I hope. I hope. Are you ready to predict the Pacific? We're just doing the Pacific. Let's 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 go through. Who do you have winning the Pacific? <clears throat> Vancouver. Really? Yep. I am going to shock you with my prediction on that. I have I have Edmonton winning the Pacific. I thought you might. That was my other choice. Who do you have finishing second? Edmonton. Okay. I have Vegas. I think Vegas is going to have a tough year. I thought they were going to have a tough year last year, and they proved me wrong, so I'm going <laughs> to... I hate yeah. when that happens. <laughs> Who do you have finishing third? Uh, that's a good one. Uh, probably LA. I have LA finishing third. I think, yeah, LA, and then I have Vegas fourth. I have Vancouver finishing fourth. Wow. All I know you hate the Canucks. No, I do. I hate the Canucks. All, <laughs> I probably hate them worse than I hate the Oilers. But I know you, you know do. what? Well, I just, with Demko injured, um, I sit and I look at their team and they tell, Vancouver fans tell me how much depth they have and it's like, yeah, prove it. Is Pedersen going to play or not play? You never know what you're getting with him. Just a lot of variables. Now there's two of them. Yes. <laughs> um, Fifth place. That's where it gets tough. Pro Calgary. Actually, have, that's what I have too. I have Calgary in fifth place. Yeah. In sixth, I have Seattle. Yep. Same. I have seventh. I have Anaheim. Same. And San Jose. Dead San Jose. Last. Yeah. Oh. Uh, you know, that's a, I don't know. I'm not, I don't know what Mike Greer's doing there. I don't either. I, I, I really don't. I mean, getting a couple veterans, like having to fully there makes sense. Um, kind of, kind of, yeah. Like if we would have signed Toffoli, people in Calgary have been like, "What? What are you doing here to rebuild? What the hell are you signing that old?" Yeah, team? well, I, you know, we've got some veterans like around the team, like you know, and yeah. smart. Like the Mantha thing is really smart. We'll cash in on him big time at the deadline. Look at how Buffalo did it. They didn't have any veterans surrounding it. They've been in a rebuild for thirteen years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and just a you know just a bad mix. And now, the, see, let me ask you that because that's been battering a lot too. Is this year that the Sabers finally make the playoffs? No. Do the Senators finally get back to the yes. playoffs? Yes. Yes. I hope so. I have a soft spot for them. I like the Senators. I've liked yeah. what they've been doing for years. I got tickets into Ottawa anytime you want to go. Really? Yep. I've been to Ottawa once. I liked it. Yeah, it's a nice city. It just sucks that the arena is not in the city. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> no, not even remotely close. Does it suck worse at the airport in Edmonton's 40 miles out of town, or does it suck worse at Ottawa plays in the middle of nowhere too? I, I hate know. everything about Edmonton, so I don't know. Uh, Are you ready to get so, this going? Yeah, I was just gonna mention this actually because I logged into my Sportsnet Plus app recently because I have to uh I gotta renew that for the season to make sure I get all my access. Um <laughs> An ex girlfriend of mine who oh, lives no. in is an Oilers fan had selected the Oilers as Your one of the team. like her favorite one of like her favorite. So it's my app, and I yep. never had an issue with her using it, other than the fact she's an Oilers fan. And on the app, my two favorite teams are the Calgary Flames, the Edmonton Oilers. I'm like, what the fuck is this? 
If we were married, I wouldn't allow this. Like, you know what's hell? hilarious is every the guy at Sportsnet's like, ooh, this guy's. <laughs> 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 it's supposed to be a spicy or really toxic relationship. We're not sure which. Jeez. Oh, Lord. Crazy. Crazy. So speaking of games and being ready, now there's games on Amazon Prime? Yes, Monday nights, I guess. And Thursday nights, they're doing this around the rink thing on Prime, too, where it's multi. It's like Red Zone in the NFL. So why the hell am I still paying for cable? Because I'm going to be watching <laughs> wrestling on Netflix and hockey on Amazon Prime. Uh, we could have a whole show on it. But well, it's it, to me, not having games on cable is going to kill sports. And it's not just hockey doing it. It's going to kill sports. What going to kill sports? How? Because when we were kids, we turned on the TV, we flipped through the channels, and oh, hockey game's on. Now I'm watching the hockey game. Yep. Now a kid's going to be like, oh, geez, I got to buy a subscription and da 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 da. And he's going to say, Dad, can you buy me a subscription to Prime? And he's going to say, Screw off, Johnny. And the kid's not going to get to watch the damn game. Yep. It's going to kill. Yep. It's going to kill sports. It's not just hockey, it's going to be all of them. Football's. They're driving down the path of destruction. I, oh man, yeah, it's wild. Eh? You, you got to have it easily accessible. Yeah, you, you have to have it easy accessible. I agree. If I, was the, if I was NHL, I would sign a less dollar deal to make sure it's accessible as hell to people. Well, especially where they're still trying to grow it in the states, right? I would, I would make it so that if you turn the TV on, freaking hockey's on. Because the other sports aren't going to do it, and other kids will just start freaking gravitating to that because it's there. It's it's in their hands. You got to get it in their hands. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's kind of weird too, like how the season started with like, you know, those games in Europe. Stupid. And then a bunch of American teams playing the first day in North America, no Canadian teams until tomorrow, like Wednesday night. Yeah. And then it's Tuesday afternoon game. What? Yeah, on a non-holiday. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's just weird. How about I got an idea? How about you start on Saturday and you have every team play? Pretty good idea. idea. I'd be, man, that'd be fun. Oh, it's too easy. I, you know, I, it's funny. I think, I think back to 2005, 2006, right after the lockout. And Tony Ludman, former Calgary Flame, Forever Flame, scored the first goal of the season with the Buffalo Sabres. And it was, so, I was in university and it was just so exciting because it just marked hockey being back. And yeah. you can't replicate that if you don't have something catastrophic like a lockout. And God knows I don't want that. But like the way they kick off their season with like these stupid intermission shows with some obscure band and some outdoor, you know, like they've done so many dumb things. Like when they had Def Leppard and uh, Joe Elliott put the Stanley Cup upside down because he didn't know he's British, right? Yeah. And he's like, I didn't know I'm British. And it's like, why? Like, just, you know, cater to the hockey lovers and they'll bring in more people. Like just, you know, quit trying to make it so mainstream. We just try to, we're, we're, we try too hard. Like and we try, the NHL tries so hard to broaden their horizons, which I understand why they have to do that, but you can't leave out the people who got you here. Right. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And you know, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, back up a little bit in my comment. Cause I, I understand it's important to, you know, appeal to a wider audience, but it's like, you know, the hockey purist is, is the foundation of what you're doing, right? So I don't know. It's just, it's like, oh, yeah, the regular season started in North America today. And it's like, oh, yeah, right. And, so you know. stupid. Saturday, every team plays. Let's do yeah. it. This isn't hard. Yeah. So tomorrow night for me, the Flames and Canucks is on at 11 o'clock. Perfect. Right? Sure. You know, if I can drink enough to knock myself over a few hours beforehand and I'll trust I can wake up to watch it. But God knows home. I'm going to try. You got to go home and go to bed. And then set your alarm. And then uh, I got work stuff. And uh, anyway, whatever. I'll figure it out. I always do. I've been doing. I'm doing this for like 25 years. So yes, you always watch them. So that starts tomorrow night, Wednesday night, October 9th, Calgary in Vancouver to kick off the season. Wins so roll, come home Saturday night for the Flyers, Hockey Night in Canada, and then yep. back to back Sunday in Edmonton, the first battle of Alberta. Right. Uh, who starts? Wolf of Vladar. Vladar. I think I would go Wolf. I would. I think I'd go Wolf. You think they're going to go Vladar? Okay, interesting. I think they'll go Vladar, but I would go Wolf. I would, but I also think they're going to go Vladar because I think they're going to defer on the side of experience. Just like, oh, you know, I think there's a little bit of hesitance there. I think so, too. I think so. Anyway, in the meantime, we're off. Get out. We're ready to start. Get us on the socials. Interact with us. Tell us what you think. Tell us what you love. Tell us what you hate. 
do us a favor. Hop on Apple Podcasts. And give us a five star review. Writer review. We'd love it, man. It, it helps us out. It moves us up the rankings, and uh, we'd really, really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And tell us what, yeah, you know, like rate us, tell us what you want to hear, get involved. Yeah. This is for you guys. You know, as much as, uh, as anything else, it's, it's what it's about. All right. Time to drop the puck tomorrow night. Can't wait. Flames Canucks. Hated Canucks. Have right. a good week, Flames Sam. <laughs> we'll talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to Flames Unfiltered with Brad Burud and Kyle Lewis. Your source for unfiltered Calgary Flames hockey talk. Keep it locked on flamesunfiltered.ca. Subscribe where you get all your podcasts to never miss an episode. Flames Hockey Talk every week presented by Inside Edge Hockey Media Group.